Yusuf Zai. I am not a Malala Yusuf Zai. Because, because I am free and I'm safe in my country, India, in my homeland, Kashmir, which is part of India. Yana Meer, of course, familiar to many of us as a senior anchor in Bharat Express. She is not, as she reminded us, Malala Yousafzai. And the reason for that reminder is, do you think that India is not the political place where you need to be a Malala Yousafzai? Is that right? That's what I'm saying. Not just politically, but in every way. India is a prosperous country. Uh, we Indians don't come to your UK as refugees. We come here... Uh, to earn degrees we come here as students we come here we work hard we become ceos in companies we even become prime ministers here and uh, we contribute to the economy of the uk we don't stay here uh, in free you know getting free funds from the uk government that is clearly the case but where is do you think uh, the need for people to accuse india over human rights particularly in kashmir was, what is your experience of that so when i say i'm not malala that's what i mean to say that malala yusuf zai was supposed to be here she earned a nobel prize she earned uh, so many millions of pounds for what her uh, duty was to work towards the education of women who were deprived from education because that's what she faced back in her country uh, she wasn't allowed to get educated. That's what she was supposed to focus on. But what is she focusing on? She's focusing on an anti-India agenda. Why so? Wh which girl in India is not getting education? Please tell me. Uh, name one girl who didn't get access to education in India. In what brings you to UK? Uh, so I came here, you know, I just, just visit relatives and just a general holiday. Uh, I lost my father a month ago, so I needed some time off myself. And uh, I was requested uh, by this uh, study center. Uh, they said that we've been trying very hard to convince the UK government to give us a chance to speak about our side of Kashmir, because apparently the narrative has been hijacked by Pakistanis living in this country uh, who claim to be Kashmiris and who've never forget about Kashmir. They've not even stepped into Pakistan in the last 30 years. And they claim to know everything about Kashmir. And they're setting up a narrative which is completely false. India is a civilizational uh, country. And uh, it's the, the ethos of India has always been secular. Uh, everyone has the right to religion. Uh, right to education is always prioritized. In fact, in the Indian uh, way of life, education is prioritized. Whether you're a boy or a girl, doesn't matter. You have to educate, not just educate. You have to get good marks, you know. Uh, at least even in the Kashmiri families, like, number achini lai, asini chale, you know, you have to get good, uh, you have to score well in your exams. It's not just enough that you study. So Pakistan tries bringing up this point that uh, there's no elections happening in Kashmir for the last four years since the abrogation. So I'd like to highlight on that. Uh, there have been DDC elections and BDC elections, which have uh, shown a, a huge voter turnout. Unlike the voter turnout that used to be when uh, the two families uh, used to stand for elections, uh, there were just two families in Kashmir that were turn by turn ruling over Kashmir and uh, people were fed up of them and hence were not voting for them. So uh, the government is trying to, you know, uh, discover new uh, faces that can be in the governance of Kashmir and hopefully we get uh, politicians who are not corrupt. You're saying really that Kashmir has got better after the end of 370? Yes, it has. So the in a, how, that, how has that happened? The only thing that's missing is elections and we're waiting for that because the Supreme Court of India has given its orders that the elections in Kashmir must happen before September 24th, uh, 2024 and uh, we are hopeful that our statehood will be restored. But other than that, everything else that has happened after the 370s abrogation has been positive whether it is uh, the economy, the upturn of the economy, whether it is women's empowerment, whether it is tourism, everything is, uh, is on the rise. You said that the narrative has been hijacked by Pakistanis. How do you propose it be corrected? When the real people of the soil come here and speak, that's what I did. I, I hope that I've started a trend and I hope that more Kashmiris will follow after me and come and say what the truth is, that now we have women wrapping around on the streets of Kashmir. Uh, women who were forced, uh, you know, in, in a stigmatized society 
at one point of time before the Article 370 was abrogated, uh, every effort was being made to convert Kashmir into a Syria or, of, or Afghanistan, with no offense to these countries, but Kashmiris did not want that in our land. Uh, but then everything that's changed, you know, people have to be uh, frank, fair, and uh, they have to come here and speak for their country because the country has really done a lot for us. And it's about time we start accepting that we are happier with India.